Hey ya peeps, I'm back with another video about pitfalls to avoid in webcomics. If you haven't already watched my last video about why you should start a webcomic, be sure to check it out. It's in the cards and the description below. So when I first wrote these two videos, I initially put them as diametric opposites, why you should and shouldn't start a webcomic, but as I wrote my second or third draft, I realized there's no one-to-one -one equivalent. There are certainly things to avoid when thinking about making your webcomic, and so I want to disclaim here that this has only been my experience, so take it with a grain of salt. And as always, let me know if you agree or disagree. So the first pitfall to avoid is that you didn't have a plan. Now, this one can be a common trapping of starting a webcomic. Understandably, you get excited about an idea, you want to dive right in and just start making pages. I know in my last video I mentioned to just start, and that's still true. Uh, but you should go in with some kind of plan before you jump to making a comic, especially if it's a long-form one. It doesn't even have to be an elaborate plan. It could be to just figure out if you even like making one if you haven't before. Nine times out of ten anyway, your first or second or even your third comic might not be the idea you fully stick with, and it's not going to be your magnum opus. So start small because this next pitfall is easy to miss, and that's you underestimate the work involved. Now, making comics is a really huge undertaking, especially if you're trying to make a long-form story. Again, that's what I do, so I'm speaking as someone with that sort of experience. I know there are people who just want to make gag comics and quick, funny, relatable things for fun, and that's also a very valid way to make comics. But no matter how small the project, I don't want to discount the work involved in making them, because uh, just because a comic seems simpler doesn't mean that there isn't a lot of mental energy involved in the ideation stage. There's a lot of mental exercise involved to make a joke land or a story beat connect uh, or even the vibe hit, you know. So even the execution and pacing of panels can be something that requires a lot of brain power. And if you wanted to do this semi-regularly, I suggest you set aside some time for that, get a feel for what's necessary and required for you to make a chapter, a page, a panel, a script, or an outline. So many times I've seen people assume they can keep a brisk pace and then burn out when they realize just how much stuff they need to learn or be prepared for, so take some time to figure that out, even after you've begun. You'll get your own process down eventually. It's just good to be prepared. Just don't get caught in the loop of this next one, which is that you continue to redraw the first three to four pages over and over and over again. <laughs> Are you unsure of how to start your comic? Afraid that those first few pages are going to make or break your story because they need to be perfect? You aren't alone in that. I've done this. In fact, I think it's normal. Sometimes you figure out how to better execute your story and you have to portray it in the clearest way. But please, if you're going to do that, do it at the thumbnail stage. I have a video about how I do mine in the description. This goes back to having a plan. You're less likely to be tempted to redraw your pages after you've posted them if you spend more time in the planning phase. This doesn't mean never redraw your pages at all. There are plenty of people who have done that, especially if they want to take their comic to print. It just means that there are some things you need to just let be old, at least for a little bit, so that you can make more progress on new pages instead. You've got a story to tell here, so don't spend too much time here because you'll want to avoid updating infrequently. Now I've got a whole video on having a buffer before you start updating your comic for the public, uh, and if you want readers besides yourself, you'll have to let them know when to expect an update. If you update, for instance, three pages on Monday, then two on Wednesday, and then finally two on Saturday, but then skip two weeks, and then continue to come back with one on Tuesday and then nothing for the rest of the month, no one is going to know when to expect you. They might think that your updates are a little dodgy, and then there'll be some drop off. Give yourself a routine. I update, for example, twice a week, Mondays and Saturdays. And before I even begin to upload any of whatever current story, I make sure to have at least half of that story or whole chapter done before that. This does require a little patience, uh, and a little restraint, but I think it's worth it if you want people to stick around and read your comic. People like routines. We like to know what to expect from you. But there are two expectations you should have going into this, and that's you started a comic for money. Now, if you're starting a comic for the sake of earning money, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but that's kind of a tall order. And outside of maybe some pocket change or side money, it isn't common. 
Seeing other comic creators make thousands of dollars or having hundreds of patrons on Patreon is still a very small percentage of what actually happens. It's still an outlier. I want to quickly say too that there isn't anything wrong with earning money from your comics. I think that's great. You work hard on your comic and you should be able to do that. Anyone is allowed to do that. I do that. I just wouldn't make it my primary motivation because it's an unpredictable source of income. And it's also a unpredictable source of motivation. You should also just enjoy making your comic first and not tie it to an outside factor like this. It should come secondary or even tertiary to the enjoyment you get out of making your thing. Uh, the second expectation and last pitfall to making your webcomic is that you started a webcomic for popularity. Allow me a soapbox moment because the state of webcomics is currently a situation clearly to be discussed in another video, but if there are any reason to start a webcomic, this would fall very, very, very low on the list personally. And I just want to say that again, there's nothing wrong with wanting readers. There's nothing wrong with wanting eyes on your work. Anyone who makes posts or a piece of art can tell you that. I'm telling you that because that's what I want. And every person who becomes a reader of my comic, I cherish because they took time out of their day to read my story. But if you're constantly on the hunt for a trend to get your numbers up on your comic, you're going to burn yourself out. What if you make something that's popular today but becomes played out in the next month? What if you liked it at first and people suggest you make it because a lot of people like it, but you stick with it and you come to resent the idea? Again, burnout creeps in. I can't stress enough for you to please make a comic primarily because you want to. You love the stories and the characters so much that you want to keep making it and you can put it down whenever you want to. You tell me what's a better situation. 10 solid readers who genuinely like and comment on your lovingly crafted pages, or moderating 500 comments from people who might not stick around. I don't know, I guess it just depends on what you're prepared for, huh? At the end of the day, make what you want, but make sure it's something that you like. Comics are often a labor of love first and foremost, and not many people get into it because it makes them money or grants them fame. Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Are you making it for money? Let me know. I, you know, feel free to disagree because I'm here, like, I'm here for you guys. <laughs> and be sure to check out my other video about why you should make your webcomic now. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye.